And when you make that shift internally and you go into a date thinking, this is a vibe check, that's it. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful and it makes it more fun. We've already done one podcast recording today. No, I mean, now you're you're all off track because you did a whole nother Welcome intro everybody. today. <laughs> you guys, we just filled in for Nick Vile. Oh, we aren't going to do it? You know, whatever. Forget it. You guys have heard it for six years. Forget it. <laughs> and Raina just absolutely crushed it. Thank you. You just sprang into action. You just uh, co-hosted another show. I don't know how I felt feel about it. <laughs> well, you were with me. But I, I mean, I was with you, but like you were the host. It was really fun. I've never been in that <laughs> scenario without you. So his show is it's reality recap. It's Bravo reality recaps. You don't watch as much Bravo as me. Yeah, and I'm that's like, fine. I listen to his show every week. I'm such a fangirl. And so he was like, Do you want the main chair? And I was like, Yeah, I got this. And yeah. so I felt like it like fell to me to like lead the conversation, take us into the next topics. And I was like, I gotta do this. I gotta like It was kind of funny. I was like, Brayden was in charge. I was like, I'm just here just for fun it was really fun i'm just hanging out i just when you and i record together i'm always just like it should be 50 50 we take turns talking but i'm like i really am the bravo historian so i'm gonna take the floor (laughs) exactly i want to give a weather update great we haven't done this in years we really haven't because i think we've made it over this hump in la of this like rainy colder winter and it's like you know 70 and sunny we made it And I think that we are good from here on out with El Nino. And I have been telling everybody this that I know because I have been researching and how when we moved here in 2023, it was just like so terrible and it rained for three months. And we were like, maybe it's just a fluke. Like maybe it's just one winter in LA. And then I did know deep down that it was going to continue. And I feel like I was just really hoping that that wasn't the case, but I was like, it's going to be into 2024. And so I had this like sneaking suspicion and sure enough, suspicions confirmed. And it was this terrible rainy, I mean, it's rainy everywhere. Like the whole climate is changing. Like don't get it twisted. But I mean, this was a crazy winter in like Miami, East coast, like everywhere was just like shit. And I think we're on the tail end of it. Allegedly we're really supposed to be done with El Nino in like June, but then El Nino, little sis might come in. But then you said you heard that it's going to be hot and wet. A wet, hot summer. (laughs) Wet hot American summer. Yeah, that's what people are saying. <laughs> Wet hot California summer. It's just like I didn't give up my like New York City <laughs> membership card to move here and live in the rain. Like I didn't do that. Like you moved to LA for two things. It's the weather and the space. And like I didn't move here for 50% of those things. I would have just stayed a New Yorker. Yeah. But I mean, I, you know, take solace in the fact that everywhere has been dog shit. Ashley and I like do this, but I keep like, I keep Chicago, New York, different neighborhoods in LA because the time's It's different. totally different. I like to make sure everybody else is miserable No, it's too. like checking up on your exes. <laughs> <laughs> like what I really checking up on New York weather is checking up to make sure your ex is still doing bad. I do. I like make sure that like, even though it's like a little rainy here, that it will be cloudy and colder there longer. I do. I check in on y'all every day. <laughs> it's part of my swipe. So through. anyway, I think it's going to shape up. I think we're going to have a great summer 2024 weather wise more so than the last like year and a half. So if I'm wrong, what are you guys going to do about it? I don't claim to be a meteorologist. People that claim to be meteorologists are wrong all the time too. And no one holds them accountable. <laughs> That's such a funny job. That's very like, but IDK as a job. I know. Like you could be like, well, it might be this, but uh, it, you never know. It's weather. Who's you really say is the vibe to. of that job. Like can't control the weather. That's your whole job basis. You don't have to be right. That's so funny. <laughs> There's like no what other dream profession job. that's like that. <laughs> Media. What if you're a doctor and you're like, mm, we'll see. <laughs> All right. Let's thank some of our partners. Thanks to Shout Buff- out to the meteorologists, though, <laughs> doing their thing. You do you. <laughs> Thanks to Buffy for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. Buffy makes award-winning bedding that's soft on you and soft on the earth. For $20 off your Buffy order, visit Buffy.co and enter promo code GGE. And thanks to Blue Land for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. All Blue Land products are made with clean ingredients you can feel good about. Right now, you can get 15% off your first order when you go to blueland.com slash GGE. Yes, and please join us in welcoming Hatch, the new sponsor of Girls Gotta Eat. I'm so excited to tell you guys about it. But Hatch is offering you up to 20% off your Hatch device per purchase and free shipping at hatch.co slash GGE. And thanks to AG1 for supporting our show. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D, 3K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash GGE. 
Okay. And as we mentioned last week, it is Mother's Day coming up. I don't know if you guys knew that besides listening to our show, but uh, Mother's Day is on Sunday. We have a great line of products for your mom, the moms in your life. Uh, so whether it is your wife, your girlfriend, your baby mama, your yeah. friend, all that, vibesonly.com, get our vibrator. Or yourself. If you're pregnant, go off. <laughs> Get yourself a vibrator. Treat yourself. Yeah. And we have a package deal available. The mother lover. <laughs> the real ones know. Mother lover. When it was like on SNL, mm-hmm. it was Lonely Island. Yeah, they did this whole parody sketch. And so we called it the mother lover. So that is going to get you the Reina, which is an amazing vibrator for anyone and everyone. The lube and the candle all in one discounted bundle. Really good discount on that. And it's limited time. Yeah, I was against it. No. <laughs> so <laughs> Raina was like, it's really? Like Raina's toy? like, I hate moms. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let's do it for Mother's Day. You were like, I'd rather not. But let's I, do it for my dad's just birthday. Get it anyway, because it's a, you're, we're not going to have that deal again on those three things. Never. So, so the, get it for whoever. The Raina is our bestseller. It's a sucker toy with a vibrate on the other end. Our lube is second to none. It's water-based. And that candle... It's amazing. If you want to have like a sexy date night at home, it is my favorite smell, Santal. Mm-hmm. Mm, it's like woodsy. Yeah, I was given a massage this past weekend, raw dog, no candle. No lube? No, well, <laughs> no, no back lube. lube? <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe I get massage without lube? <laughs> Wait, that reminds me. I could tell you about this massage night this weekend. Oh my uh, God, the massage. <laughs> no, that's right. Oh the Ann Sparkle Eyes got the privilege of getting the voice note download. Okay, Can so I anyway. tell you, when you are with him, I really, I revel in sending you guys voice notes I, together. I know that he's going to laugh at too. Oh yeah. He was like mid-conversation. I was like, oh, we have a voice note from Raina. He was like, I was in the middle of like telling you a story. You know it's important. And I was like, well, let's f- fuck your little story. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm kidding. But he like got so excited. Like he was cooking me dinner and I was like, oh, we got a voice note from Raina. Come over. Let's listen together. He well, you, loves it. I love it. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't interrupt this weekend if it wasn't important. So I'll <laughs> tell you guys in a minute, but also get that, get that for your mom, vibesonly.com. We have tons of stuff that are great for moms or great for yourself, as Ashley said. And then our best seller and our consumable line, our suck and blow gel. We have a brand new flavor for spring. If you like sucking dick or don't like sucking dick, love eating pussy don't love it well you're stupid if you don't love it but this is an oral enhancer for everybody it's going to enhance your saliva glands and we're announcing our spring flavor as a former georgia peach trish would like to announce that the newest suck and blow gel flavor is juicy peach i am so excited about this yeah and if you guys need a translation for that juicy peach i'll say it in my voice i'm just so excited because of georgia i get my peaches down in georgia justin bieber (laughs) Cultural references for days. You got that yummy, yummy. I mean, this is a flavor that you guys have wanted. We crowdsource this stuff all the time. Honestly, partially for our own entertainment because I like seeing the funny flavors. And we did a funny April Fool's post on the Vibes Only Instagram and some of the funny flavors you guys, most of them came from like crowdsource questions. But when you guys are being serious, you really have requested peach and we have done a lot of taste testing. We probably taste tested this for over a year just to get it right and get it like to the right flavor and, you know, the sweetness, juiciness. So, I mean, it'll really like you taste it like my mouth salivates for it I know and then we launched suck and blow gel two years ago with the mango flavor and it was like our best seller people went crazy for yeah. it so this is in like the mango family <laughs> yeah. but peach I think is going to be a huge seller and these yeah. are all limited time flavors so we did them for the season and then they're gone yeah maybe and you know since it's peach Put eat some ass with it what would we don't advertise the suck and blow gel for eating ass, but go off. It's an oral enhancer. It's an oral enhancer. Why would you not? Butthole? You want to taste butthole. <laughs> this is exactly. <laughs> like what? Dicks taste fine. Like I'll suck a dick. I love sucking dick. I haven't had a lot of weird funky smells on dicks. Yeah, but yeah. A butthole stays earthy. <laughs> I wouldn't know because I would eaten. never eat a butthole. <laughs> I would never stick my face in a man's butthole. That's insane. I've said it before. Anyone off the street can eat mine. To put up my nose, my new nose, my pristine, perfect nose in a butthole. My old nose probably would have just got stuck in there. <laughs> you can't eat ass with that nose, ma'am. You'll get stuck. Like a vortex, that butthole just sucks up that nose. And as someone who's eaten one butthole, so yeah. I've eaten one more butthole than you have, and it was after a shower, and he didn't have like a lot of hair. Yeah. He wasn't like a hairy person. He was, I think, maybe he was Dutch. No. Oh. You ate a Dutch butthole? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a d- delicacy. Not the d- Danish. Like Not who? the Dutch butthole. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> 
know anyone. I'm like thinking of like this pastry in Prague called like the tur- <laughs> turdelnik or whatever. And like the, the Dutch bottle is like a, a delicacy <laughs> in that part of the country. I don't know what he oh, was. He was the pale Dutch butt. With- <laughs> <laughs> was it in Amsterdam? No. <laughs> There's Dutch people outside. I know, I know that. I but know, like, he was it wasn't over there. It was a Nordic butthole. Oh, I not the he... Nordic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see what you mean. Though. He was tall, just like and pale, pale, blonde like pasty. hair. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> that is insane. Okay, well, good for you. No, I mean, I do understand that it's empowering. I mean, Nikki Glaser does bits to about who? the man that your face is in his butthole <laughs> she says she says she felt like when she first ate an asshole that she was like i should run for president like she felt empowered that's in like a I, dirty way like she's like i'm kinky that's how i feel when i like suck dick and like lick the taint and like don't neglect the balls but like yeah. a butthole i'm like we have fallen from grace <laughs> so anyway get the <laughs> sucking blow gel guys <laughs> and eat it on that dutch butt no if <laughs> you guys if you eat this on a Dutch person, please DM us. I don't know why, but like, I feel like Dutch should be like apple flavored, like a pet Dutch pound cake. Yeah. Totally. A Dutch baby. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. So it'll be our Dutch collection. Um, <laughs> but we're really excited for you guys to like get this and taste it. I'm, I've all fucked up. I don't even know what I was going to say. It's on sale now and can't recommend enough. I can't wait to use it myself. I have to tell you that I did send a text to sparkle eyes. I went to Boston this past week and I'll tell you guys a little bit about it. It was a little bit more of an abbreviated trip because I had to get back for Brittany Schmidt's birthday and to do this Nick thing that we did this morning, Monday morning. And so I usually go like Thursday afternoon, early evening. And I leave Monday morning, but I left Sunday morning. It's so like a whole day earlier than. So anyway, we had, you know, two and a half days and we had like a lot of great sex and we really had like such a wonderful weekend, but I just didn't suck his dick. And I, <laughs> and, and I kind of felt like, he hadn't been like dropping hints, but he just makes a lot of funny like jokes. We make a lot of like sexual jokes. And there was a point where I was like, you're making like a lot of dick jokes, like just funny. Like he's just quick with it. It's just that like boy humor and we both share that. And you share that too. You know, any opening to do a like blowjob joke or that's what he said kind of stuff. Whatever. Uh-huh. And so I was on the plane, like going home and I was like, I'm sorry I didn't suck your dick this weekend. I was like, I really feel <laughs> Like I set an apology text. It was like a rain check on that. Like I, it just didn't come up. Sometimes you're not inspired. Yeah. Like, you know, he's one of those guys. It's like, I don't need that, but I obviously I like it. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just one of those. He's never really requested. I enjoy sucking his dick. We have the blow gels, all the things. So I get down there, but like, it just didn't come up this weekend. Like, you know what I mean? We did other stuff. Yeah. And so when I sent that text, like it was a dead ass serious text. Like, I'm so sorry I didn't get to that blowjob this you're, weekend. You're but a long distance relationship. We'll rain check it. Every time you guys are together, it's an event and you want to do all the things. But I'm really proud of you because you've come a long way. Because I feel like sucking dick was not like number one on the menu for you when I met you for like years. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And I feel like you've really come into your own. Like you enjoy it now. Yeah. And it's really, like we said before, when I'm doing it, it is more in the foreplay realm. It's not just like get down there to finish the job. You know, we both really like to have intercourse and like, you know, be intimate and look at each other, you know, like that whole thing. Uh And I think I said in that text and he was just like, am I giving off the energy that I need an apology? (laughs) So funny. (laughs) And I was like, no, I just like wanted to, you know, I would have loved it if he was like, you should be sorry. Yeah. He was like, thank you. I I appreciate it. Cause I was upset. No, he was just like, that's so funny. And you know, I don't care. And I'm like, okay, well planned all this stuff for you this weekend, Ashley. And you didn't even suck my dick. Yeah. He was like, I planned a picnic for you and I didn't get a blow job. (laughs) I'm disappointed if somebody finishes during a blowjob. I'm like, I wasn't done with this experience. I don't I'm not finishing blowjobs. That's actually a great call. I'm just like, we're just done here. That is so true. It's I mean, that's rude. the whole thing we talk about. We feel like people are intimidated. We did a whole episode, so you can go back and listen, called How to Give Better Blowjobs and Enjoy Them. It was or on something. Valentine's Day. Yeah, it was on Valentine's Day in 2022. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds about right. But that's such a great point. Like, oh, we're done now. I've done you a favor and you've ruined the experience for me. Yeah. Like I get it that there's some, some moments you want to get down there and do it all. And that's the, what the event of the night is, but you're so right. Like, yeah, then it's just over. What do we do now? What do we do? I, you I mean, they go can down go me, down I on guess, you. Yeah. But, like, I don't but know. they're a little tired. Yeah. I know it's like over for them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm just, I'm a foreplay. It's rude. Dick sucker. It's rude. If you finish during a blowjob. You've just totally reframed this for me. Not that I was finishing them on the reg, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's just, now it's a little bit of a bummer. Too. It is a bummer. We, we now, we just, what, watch a movie? <laughs> <laughs> While well, you regenerate, we have a little sex tomorrow. I got to do this all over again <laughs> right, tomorrow. Right. Thanks. 
great so great funny call. that you just like when you said like i just didn't think of it like it's like dallas business car guy like i never felt inspired to suck his dick never put it in my <laughs> mouth never came up any of the yeah. times we had sex i wasn't like that's why i don't like you oh 100 percent. yes the first time you ever said that when did you say that it was so hysterical when you I, said you didn't feel inspired I forget who. the vibe this weekend was it was good it was just very like i mean we're still new but it felt like very new like just wa- rip each other's clothes off like really wanted to like get down to it so it just didn't really come up you know yeah sometimes you just want to start fucking mm-hmm. that's been a critique i've gotten in the past i need to do a little more foreplay because i do just get so excited mm-hmm. i just want to like penetrate yeah i want to be penetrated i don't want to penetrate you yeah no one's ever let me peg them <laughs> 2025 goal i could peg somebody maybe that should be your goal before you turn 40 peg somebody yeah i would love that can you just make that the goal under the universe i mean i would love to peg somebody that sounds so fun i've yeah. always wanted to yeah. Like 10 years I've wanted to. I know. We've been talking about it. It's Tessa's birthday today. <gasps> so happy, happy birthday. birthday to Tessa. By the time this comes out. And I was wondering, like, do you have any, like, sexual goals for the year? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, don't tell us. You're like our daughter. I don't even like when you post thirst traps on Instagram. I'm like, I shouldn't watch Rita! <laughs> no, she can post whatever she wants. But it, yeah, does, it does feel no, a little bit like, like, I feel like I'm not supposed to see this. I'm your God. boss. <laughs> Just block us. <laughs> well, no, we'll meet no, her. you're beautiful no. always. Everything you do is great. It's just I'm like, I don't know where she'd be here. But her then, bo- like, we do it too. She's like, ooh, you're my boss. And she's like, ooh, my mom's are posting. Like, I'm sitting here talking about sucking my boyfriend's dick in front of her. You she's sure? like, oh, I'm sorry that I showed some cleavage. <laughs> you, she, she had to post a photo of you on your knees on a bed holding a butt plug. What's it? The cock ring. Anyway, the gentleman's package is back in stock also, you guys. I was promoting it in a sexual manner last week, and that's back. So, yes. So, happy birthday to Tessa. And then, I don't think we said this last week, but Azul's gotcha day was last week. So, he's been with us. It's, like, April 24th. So, he's been with us for three years. Oh, Azul, you're welcome. I told her to keep you. I know. Can you believe it, Aunt Raina? Yeah. It's just, like, I can't believe three years has really flown by. I know. I love it. He's come a long way since being seized from an arrest in South Carolina. You know what I feel? I was, like, yesterday years old when I realized you had that footage. Is that real? What? The f- the photo of him being seized? Oh no, that wasn't him being seized. It was him <laughs> like at the shelter. <laughs> I was like, what? You got that news clip? <laughs> I mean, oh, it, did, it looked like a still. You put it on your Instagram, and it looked yes. like news footage of <laughs> a soul being seized from like the meth lab. It kind of looked like that. <laughs> I thought that's what we'll that was. post it. Basically, what it was. It's very cute because I love to you know reminisce, and I'm a sentimental person in general. But I posted the original email I got when my rescue Animal Lighthouse shout out to them. We love them. When they were like, "Hey, we know you want to foster. We have this little fluffy tailed boy coming in. Would you want to foster him?" And then there is like a video, and I think a still showed up in the email. But he was already at the oh. shelter. I, w- I meant to ask you because I was like, I can't believe this is the first time I'm seeing this footage of him being rescued. No, you know I can't get the story. <laughs> I've talked about this before. Like they won't tell me what happened so I just have to come up with my own hypothesis that it was like a drug bust or you know that's kind of what I'm guessing yeah why else would you bust up in a house and Um, then there's four dogs in there you know like it just it feels like like a drug situation I mean Azul's teeth came looking like he was the one doing meth but yeah but we're a plastic surgery family yeah so he has to get it too I think I said this before but there was a vet who reached out to me and asked if she could give Azul braces it's like her final thing in vet school dog braces that's yeah, okay. she was like, this is part of what I want to do. I can't remember how she worded it, but she was like, can I do braces on Azul? Whatever. It was like part of her residency. I don't know how that works exactly. <laughs> and I was like, no, I just like him like this. It's like her thesis project. I was like, there's only four teeth even. <laughs> <laughs> is it even braces if you only have to do four? Yeah. It's crazy. I also wanted to say, I mean, at this point, we will have just gotten back from the Lovers and Friends Festival in Las Vegas. But as we record, we are heading out there this weekend. And it's just like my Super Bowl. And it's all my <laughs> like throwback artists from like the 90s, early 2000s. And I went two years ago. It was truly like the best day of my life. And you're coming this year. And we'll see how you do. Because <laughs> I don't, you're not a musical festival girly. Fuck no. You don't care about these artists as much. And it's going to be hot. As I feel empowered though going into it because like no one thinks I'm a music festival girly. I left Coachella as soon as I got there. Essentially, it's just it's not for me. I don't want to be hot. I I just don't care that much. It's it's not just it's not for me. I'll go to a concert. It's still not my favorite way to spend money. But like in the hierarchy of like what I spent my money on, it's like travel, food, clothing, music is so far at the bottom. Yeah. So so we'll see how it goes. I'm excited. We have a big group of girlfriends going. Yeah. That to me is like worth the money. I just want to totally everybody. Yeah, and we'll do the pool party 
party at the Encore at the Wynn on Friday. I think it's like Diplo and we have a dinner that night and it's my best friend from childhood's kind of early 40th celebration. And so it's like a whole thing. And yeah, we'll see how you fare. I mean, to me, I'm like, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Like I'm dressing for it. I'm hydrating. Like I'm getting there as early as I can. And like, I'm planning out my schedule. Like we'll see who wants to like run around with me and do all this. Cause like the lineup is insane. It's like so many artists that I'm like, I can't see them all. Like I really wish it was two days. It's crazy to me that they put people of our age through this. Uh, this is an older demo and they're like mm, 300 artists one day. See if they can do it. See how many of them die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's kill off some yeah, of this generation. See who survives. <laughs> See if you can make it to Janet like Jackson that Games. night. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Well, there's like six of us going and plus like a bigger group also. Yeah. So like I feel fine. I like this is why I like group trips. You can splinter off if you feel like it. Yeah. Lee's gonna get blacked out by four o'clock. She'll take a nap with me. Yeah, I mean you can just and you can walk back to the hotel. Two years ago I had to go back and like take a break, take a shower, do an alpha change. I like physically felt like so disgusting. Yeah. But well, let's take a quick break and then we'll get back into it. Okay. I am so excited to tell you guys about Hatch. Okay, so I am so big on sleep and quality of sleep. And I'm always trying to put my phone away, get to sleep in a more healthy way, wake up in a more healthy way and not spike your cortisol, all the mm -hmm. stuff that happens and what the screens do to your brain activity and all that type of thing. So we're just really excited to talk about this. And I think everybody can relate to that. Like you're laying in bed, you know, if your phone's within reach, like you're tempted to look at it and just kind of scroll into you fall asleep and it's just, it's not great for you. And so with Hatch, you really can learn to put your screens away and build sleep routines that help prioritize your rest. So Girls Gotta Eat has teamed up with Hatch and Hatch is offering you up to 20% off your Hatch device purchase and free shipping at hatch.co slash GGE. So I just got mine. The one I have is the Hatch Restore 2. I'm so excited. It like matches the aesthetic of my bedroom. So it's just this like, half it's a device. Shape. Yeah. It's like a half moon shape and they come in these really beautiful neutral shades. And we knew that they are a partner of ours and we were talking to some girlfriends and we were on that trip and some girls were like, oh my God, I couldn't like live without this now. So what it does is it's not your traditional alarm or your sound machine. It's going to use a soft glowing light paired with soothing sounds to help you wind down peacefully at night bringing that spa-like feel into your bedroom. And then it will wake you up gently with a sunrise that gradually changes color and gets brighter, simulating your natural sleep patterns. So before my hatch, I A, went to bed with soothing sounds. You know, I like my white noise or rain sounds and whatnot. And then I wake up with like a more gradual alarm. I... Uh, a couple times have woken up with my boyfriend and he just has that like, uh, uh, That's uh. Insane. I think it's really bad for you. I don't think you're supposed to jolt up like that. Like my heart races, like the no. couple times he's forgotten to turn off his like work day alarm. And I've woken up with him. I feel like my blood pressure rises. Like my heart is beating. Like, I don't think you're supposed to wake up like that. No. You know, like maybe there's some science of people that want to, but I think you are supposed to wake up gradually. I mean, in an ideal world, you wake up with the sun, you know, like you actually have that circadian rhythm and and you like wake up naturally the when your body's supposed to. So this really does try to simulate that for you and really helps you prioritize rest and create bedtime habits that make you feel ready for sleep at night and energize in the morning. So I really like they're doing the whole experience when you go to bed and how you wake up. And again, it's beautiful. I love the way it looks in my bedroom. It looks better than any sound machine alarm clock I've ever seen. And Hatch has put over 5 million people to sleep. We're talking babies to adults, great for babies too. And 78% of users say that their sleep has improved since using a Hatch device. I just think this would help any anyone and everyone. We are so excited for you guys to try it. We love ours and we have a discount for you. A million things don't want you to sleep. Hatch does. Right now, Hatch is offering you up to 20% off and free shipping on your Hatch device purchase. Visit hatch.co slash GGE for up to 20% off. And of course, that's H-A-T-C-H dot co slash GGE. Yes, and something I'm very passionate about, cleaning my house. Blue Land is on a mission to eliminate single-use plastic by reinventing cleaning essentials to be better for you and the planet with the same powerful clean you're used to. So did you guys know that around 5 billion plastic hand soap and cleaning bottles are thrown away each year? So it's unbelievable. And if that's not bad enough, most cleaning formulas are 90% water which is heavy to ship and it leads to carbon emissions. But also just sometimes I like the smell from cleaning products, the ammonia alone, it makes me feel like nauseous. 
nauseous mm-hmm. from cleaning. And I'm oh just my God. like, yeah. I'm huffing chlorine and ammonia yeah. and I feel sick. But Blue Land is trusted in over 1 million homes, including mine. We love Blue Land products. So they really have everything, all cleaning sprays. So stuff that's good for windows and mirrors. They have hand soap, toilet bowl cleaner, laundry tablets, and all Blue Land products are made with clean ingredients you can feel good about. And it's all refillable. So it comes with these refillable tabs. The bottles are beautiful. So the spray bottles come in pink, blue, and green, I think. And they just look really nice. Mm-hmm. And I feel great that I'm not just tossing out all this garbage all the time. Yeah, I love the Forever bottles and the tablets. And then, of course, the toilet cleaner we're obsessed with and the laundry tablets. And this is like all I use. And we love the smells. And we don't feel like it's all like chemically and gross. And oh, and the dishwasher, too. I use all of it. Like all that's, it. Yeah. I mean, coming to my house, I'm not lying to you guys. I mean, and I'm like pretty picky. Like I have a whole like dishwashers are a scam. They don't clean. But like these really work. Gets my laundry. Laundry is like also stuff that like laundry detergent and fabric softeners can really irritate your skin and mm-hmm. have a lot of chemicals and fragrances and stuff like that. It's bad for you. So, so you buy these. The refills start at just two twenty five. So it's really great. And Blue Land has a special offer for listeners right now. Get fifteen percent off your first order by going to blueland.com slash gge. You won't want to miss this. Blueland.com slash gge for fifteen percent off. That's blueland.com slash gge to get fifteen percent off. Okay, so I was in Boston this past weekend, and I just have to. T- I love telling you about like a f- some fan interactions because they're like my favorite. Those are like some of our absolute favorite girlies, and we have a show there and we'll talk about the tour in a little bit but I just had like two very funny things so one we were like going to his parents house and just to like visit with them for a little bit and they live like more in the suburbs like outside of Boston and so we stopped at this huge farm it was so beautiful I was like Raina would be loving this so much like Raina and my mom would thrive here it was just like this huge market then they had this giant tulip field they were doing a tulip picking day so there's all these like families and this like tulip garden you could get flowers it's huge it's called the Wilson farm I think they have the pumpkin patch in the fall and it's just this like amazing farmer's market indoor vibe whatever it's like incredible so I was like let me pop in there and get some flowers for your mom. So I go in, I get her like a dozen tulips and I didn't pick them myself. Sorry, we wouldn't have time. And we're driving out and I hear like, Ashley, and it's like car girl in the suburbs out of this farm. Ashley, we love you. Ah! And it's like five girls. They're hanging out of this SUV. Aww. They're like two cars behind. And they're like, ah! and so I was like, Oh, first of all, like, wh- how am I hearing these girls' name in like the farm in the suburbs, whatever? And so I turn around, I'm like, I love you too, whatever. And they go, show us your tulips. And I like <laughs> stick this bouquet out the window. All day we were going, show us no, your tulips. That's not where I thought this was going. Show us it, your. It, it's so close to show us your tits. Like, they go, show us your tulips. And then I stuck 12 tulips out the window and they go, woo! <laughs> this is better than our audience. Funniest thing. That is not what I expected. Show us your tulips. Show us your tulips. What if you just took your boobs out? I know. I was like, oh, I heard tits. Sorry, I heard breasts. They're no like, one's we ever said tulips, to see flowers. you weirdo. <laughs> but also no one's ever asked to see my tits either. They're like, we don't care. We we get it. They're small. But And then the other thing, we went to this dinner at this place, which I've been trying to gatekeep them a little bit, but I still want to hype them. They're called Source. It's like my favorite pizza. It's in Cambridge, like in Harvard Square. So we leave the restaurant we're walking out this girl comes up to me in the street she walked out the same time as us she's with her boyfriend and she was just like I love you so much you know coming to the show this and that we've come to the show before whatever and she was like can I get a picture with you and then Sparkle Eyes was like do you want me to take it and she was like of course and so he goes after this you can get a picture of us and he said it kidding Uh well well (laughs) and I thought he meant like me and him yeah (laughs) after (laughs) <laughs> after, after we took a picture, he, he handed it to her and made her take a picture of him and her boyfriend. <laughs> he, I was like, what? He made this girl take a picture of him and her boyfriend on the street. First of all, I thought you meant her and him. No. So other, she could be like, me and Sparkle Eyes. Yeah. I meant Sparkle Eyes. <laughs> and no, boyfriend. him and her boyfriend. I was like, what am I even seeing happen? And this girl's probably like, what am I doing? It so was so funny. funny. He's so funny. Like, he really, like, always, he makes me laugh all the time. But I don't know, something about this weekend, he was especially, like, on one. I was, it was very, very funny. I just think he really is, like, <laughs> such a guy's guy. And, like, guys <laughs> like him. Our friends' boyfriends all like him. It's yeah. important to him and Ryan are buddies. Like, it's important <laughs> to him to, like, get along with everybody yeah and then another girl we were hanging out in seaport just out in the water this girl comes over and she sat right down you do not expect she sat right down she was like i'm 28 and one thing she's very cute and she was like you guys helped me through a lot she came to the show in 2021 
by herself and she's going to come again. And she was like very cute. And I loved her story. But at one point she goes, I mean, you're older than me. And like, I knew what she <laughs> meant. Like, I appreciate that. She's 28. I'm 40. It's yeah. not like she's 38 being like, I mean, I just want to be clear that you're older than me. Like you would do, but she just was, just, I'm kidding. But she was just like, I look up to you in a funny way, but she walked away and he was like, did that bother you? I was like, no, not at all. I knew what she contact, meant, you know, what she but means. to say to somebody, I mean, you're older than me. It's very funny. But I, I she didn't mean it like that at all. And I really appreciate her coming and sitting down and like just settling right in and sharing her story. But, you know, being there just, I don't know, it made me so excited to go back out on tour and like see all of you guys. And, you know, we have that third show we added in Boston and we really hope you guys like snatch up those tickets because it, it'll sell out. And then, of course, every other place we're going, like we have so many shows. We haven't listed them all in a couple weeks, but we're so excited for the No Crumbs tour in the fall and the winter. Girls got eat.com. You guys can get all those tickets and it just like means so much because when I meet our listeners on the street, like almost all the time they have like come to a show or they're coming to another show. And I just feel like we have shared this bond oh, no. like every single time, like every single time at Boston, at least because those are like the elite where they're just like, I came in 2019. I came in 2021. I came in 2023. I'm coming I mean, this year, like, it just means so much. I feel like we all, like, really share this, like, experience together. It never gets lost on me what an honor it is that somebody spends their money and a lot of their time on us. Yeah. I met the hottest couple ever in Santa Barbara, and they're like, we came to the show in Sacramento <sighs> last year. And I was like, you two are so hot out of a threesome with you. Yeah. I want to hear about your weekend. So I had, honestly, like, the best few days. Uh, I, like, I cannot believe it. how great it was. So this was this weird thing. No one that we're friends with was in town this weekend. It was really pretty crazy. Everybody abandoned me. All, like, 100% of people, like, yeah. left. And so I was like, what am I going to do? But mm -hmm. I've been wanting to go to Santa Barbara and Ojai. Santa Barbara is two hours north and it's like sort of a beach town like a fancy beach town and Ojai is inland in the mountains so Santa Barbara was like really cloudy the day I got there and it is sort of like a ghost town during the week anyways and so I was like the fuck am I gonna do all day to like kill time I'm like so yeah. bored I'm like between meals and so I like looked at the spa and then it was like last minute so she was like do you mind a male therapist and I was like I could do that that's fine like it usually turns me on a lot so I'm like that's great yeah. fine so I got there and this guy walks into the room he's young and so buff and like big muscles buff. like big thick nerd glasses oh my god and he's, he's like giving superman 30. yeah he did he looked like a short superman and short king i like laid down on my stomach whatever and he was like do you want like me to focus on anything i was like no i'm great and he's like do you have any pain or i was like no and he was like nothing and i was like i don't carry a lot of tension in my body and he's like that's crazy <laughs> but anyways but he was like so hot so i put my face in like that butt pillow in that you hole. put your face in yeah. in the hole and I like in the toilet seat I like couldn't stop smiling and laughing at how uncomfortable this was because he's like very hot and I just you just walk in you're just like immediately naked with a person they get to put their hands on you it's so so wild it's crazy and like he gets like down to my butt where the oil is and I don't know he said something and then I said something and then we just started like talking and we talked for the full hour and I'm always like how do I stay present during a massage I don't pay all this money yeah. like how do I and like I actually like was able to stay present because him and I just like laughed and joked that around so the time. crazy but it's so awkward so you don't intimate. acknowledge it it's so intimate his hands are all over my body with lube yeah with the lube don't forget you guys sprain it to like her lube massages it's crazy and you enjoyed it I loved it I had so much fun. okay would you enjoy it if he wasn't hot you would have no. been like shut the fuck up Less. I mean it always says like how much talking do you want yeah like an uber say, like <laughs> Who says a bunch of I want a full conversation? Like I said to him, like, do you prefer to disassociate when this happens? And he was like, I don't know, it depends on the on like the client. He was like, some clients moan a little bit. <laughs> Raina, that's sexual. And I was like, he wanted you to moan. <laughs> Some clients moan a little. He didn't say that to you. Yes, he, did. he used the word moan. Yeah, I said like what? <laughs> he said make noises, and I said moan. Okay, okay exactly. I I said moan exactly. I was back. like, he didn't say moan to you. <laughs> That's a sex. But I was like, what's like some weird stuff people have done? He's like, there's some kind of crazy noises, and I was like, if a man walks in here, is he weird about it being you? Because you're hot. Like, I didn't say because you're hot. That would have been sexual harassment. But you said it. <laughs> I just <laughs> sussed out her. It was definitely another key to lie. <laughs> it's just their their hands are all over your body and they're like inches away. He did the whole butt, like nude butt cheeks. Yeah. Sometimes they don't do nude, nude butt. And I was just so intimate. We were talking about like his life. He mentioned like some daddy issues and I was like, here's where we're going to be quiet now. I don't, we're here to talk about you my You start issues. snoring. Yeah. Like, oh, weird. I fell asleep. You did such a great job. Talk to someone else about your daddy issues. <laughs> yeah, seriously. He like mentioned that he had a girlfriend while we were doing it. Oh, he it. did. And I okay. was like, is this uncomfortable? 
Like, how does she feel about this? Yeah. I mean, that whole thing is, like, so crazy to me that your boyfriend, like, lubes people up for a living. How many butts did you touch today? Yeah, I mean, the same. It's, like, when a guy, it's, like, when his girlfriend's touching on all these people every day, too, you know? I don't know. I mean, it's professional. It's, like, anybody that's, like, actors make out with other actors. Yeah. That's part of the job. I have not had a male masseuse in so many years. I'm going to go back to it. I haven't in a long time, and I'm going back. Like, it is so intimate. Sexy. I found myself getting a little jealous when he told me he had a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his, his palm is in your butt crack, and you're I, like, damn it. I thought I was the only one. <laughs> yeah. You're like, do you touch her like this? <laughs> do you like, tell yeah, her about your I'll daddy issues <laughs> while you rub her tension out? Oh, my God. So that's what I voice noted to you and you and Sparkle Eyes. I was yeah. excited. We enjoyed it. Anyways. Well, we are going to get into it with Tinks. We are so excited for you guys. This is such a fun conversation. We haven't had this in a minute. We've just had a lot of male guests on, but it really is like three girlfriends just chatting about dating. And I just loved it so much. And you guys are going to love it too. But before we do, I'm going to tell you about AG1. It is important to me and hopefully you guys that any supplements that you take that I take are of the highest quality. And that's why for years now, three, three years, I have been drinking AG1 and we really love it for a lot of different reasons. They conduct relentless testing to set the standard for purity and potency. So it really works. You can really trust the formula. Their team is always trying to find better ways to source, test, and aim to find the best quality ingredients available. And it is researched and developed by an in-house team of scientists, doctors, and nutritionists with decades of experience in their respective fields. So you guys can feel safe and secure that it's really going to be good for you. So people always ask us like if it's the real deal, and we really do feel that it is. And that's why we've been drinking it for so long. So quality for AG1 is isn't just a buzzword. It's a commitment backed by expert-led scientific research, high-quality ingredients, industry-leading manufacturing, and rigorous testing. At each step of the process, AG1 goes above and beyond industry standards. So we love that. Again, their team is obsessive over the product quality, their standards, their sustainable practices, which is important. And they really feel that taking care of your health shouldn't be complicated. So it really simplifies it by just replacing multiple health supplements like multivitamins, digestive aids, immune support, and more in just one simple scoop you're just going to do that simple scoop in your glass of water. We like really, really ice cold water and just shake it up. And the travel packs are great on the go too. And it's just going to cover those nutritional basis and set yourself up for success and just, you know, one, one drink and just like 60 seconds, if you will. So you get your prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes for gut support, all kinds of other good stuff in there too. Your folate, magnesium, so important. I feel like magnesium has never been hotter. <laughs> and like how important it is for you. Your ashwagandha for stress support, vitamin C, zinc, rhodiola, B vitamins, all the things. So we really cannot recommend enough. And it's just such an easy thing to incorporate into your daily routine and cover those nutritional bases. So we have partnered with AG1 for so long because they make such a high quality product that we genuinely look forward to drinking every day. So if you want to replace your multivitamin and more, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first subscription at drinkag1.com slash GGE. That's drinkag1.com slash Slash GGE. Check it out. Okay. And last but not least, you guys know that I am obsessed with sleeping eight hours a night. It's very important to me. And I really get a restful sleep. And I credit a lot of that to Buffy. My whole bed is Buffy. The sheets, the comforter, the duvet cover, the pillowcases, everything is all Buffy. And Buffy makes award-winning bedding that is soft on you and soft on the earth. They use innovative design and earth-friendly materials to make bedding that is softer, safer, and also better for our planet. So I have the Buffy Breeze comforter, sheet set, and duvet cover and I like to sleep kind of cool so I just find it so soft the Buffy Breeze sheet set is the softest sheets I have ever touched I don't know what they are doing over there at Buffy but it's crazy and it comes in so many colors they have over 30 colors of it they have patterns they have stripes Ooh. the solids I have I have earth and I have redwood which are both sort of like clay tones but it has really like made my bedroom pop off I just love the way it looks and it's so breathable and it feels really nice against my skin so I like to sleep naked on these and if that's not for you they also have soft eucalyptus sheets so those are cool and hyperallergenic they're dyed using natural skin safe botanical dyes it's just unparalleled softness absolutely and it's the only thing i've slept on for years oh, i yeah. love it so much buffy offers a free seven night at home trial so you can experience buffy before committing to buying it shipping is free customers also enjoy a 100 night free returns policy for 20 dollars off your buffy order visit buffy.co and enter gge that's buffy.co 
promo code GGE for $20 off. Okay. Okay, guys, we are very excited to welcome our guest today. She is a lifestyle creator, advice expert, and the host of the podcast, It's Me Tanks. She has been named one of Forbes' top creators, and she is a New York Times bestselling author of The Shift. Change your perspective, not yourself. You know her as TikTok's big sister. Please welcome to the show, Tanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. We're learning a lot. I'm glad. We didn't know if Tinks, when the name came about, you've had it since you were 12. Yeah, long-standing nickname. We didn't know you had a water bottle company. Yes, ESWB Emotional Support Water Bottles. Because I made a video in 2020 about this water cup that I loved, mm-hmm. and I was like so obsessed with it, and it, it went really viral. And then if you searched Tinks Cup and Amazon, it would come up. Oh. And then so like... After a year, I started developing my own because I was like, I really totally. want really cute patterns and colors for us to have. Because I feel like a water bottle now is almost like a phone case where you kind of want to have multiple to, for your yeah. mood and your vibe. And like, you need one for the car. You need your like bedside table one. So I'll send you guys some. And okay, so you're a water bottle designer and <laughs> also a DJ. A DJ, writer. How do you fit it all in? Multi-hyphenate. It's a, I'm a true millennial. Where did you DJ in New York last week? Lucy's the okay. club. Yeah, it was really fun. I DJ with my best friend, Lucas. We have been best friends for like eight years. I met him in San Francisco and we've always loved music. And then, I mean, it's not that deep. Basically <laughs> at Coachella last year, we were like a little drunk. And, um, <laughs> you know, we were enjoying nature's bounties, like all the like different everyone bounties. There. Yeah. Yeah. And we were like looking at Sophie Tucker and we were like, you know, they look like they have so much fun. Like we should do that. We should get paid to party and, and go all over the world and party with our friends. And so that's what we decided to do. And less than a year later, we're doing it. So that is so iconic. You know, my favorite non DJ DJ besides you now. <laughs> Is Shaq. Yeah. Wait, what does he go by? DJ Diesel. Yeah. <laughs> Tessa popped up with that one. People, oh. people. So fun. It's a good skill to have. And it's so fun. And I love to party like in a non-ironic way. Like I really do just like I enjoy a party. I always will. It's not like a phase. It's not like something I'm going to grow out of. Like yeah. no matter what happens, if I have kids, whatever, like I'm always going to love a party. So it's just like a fun skill to have and bring people together. And it's a great way to hang with my community because like so many of them came on Saturday night. We get to rage together. Yeah. It's fun. I feel like we, we say I'm like the DJ, but I'm not actually like behind the booth. You want to be one? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. Okay. I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Since you say you like to party, you're like, no, really? Like I love to party. Do you consider yourself an extrovert? No, I'm actually an extroverted introvert. I knew you were going to say that. It's like what everybody says. I know, I know everyone does, but it's like I get energy from the right people and I get very tired from the wrong people. I'm so rude about small talk. Like I can't (laughs) emphasize this enough. People think that I'm kidding. My eyes will like start to glaze over. Like I was born cross-eyed. So like sometimes I even feel like I go a little cross-eyed when people, when if I sit down and people are like, so where are you from? I'm like, oh, like I start to spasm. Like I can't. And it's because I'm just, I can't deal with the small talk. Like I'm terrible at a cocktail party where I don't know anyone. But if you put me in, you know, in front of a DJ booth, give me a microphone, then we're good. You know? Were you always the girl growing up that said like, crazy shit you just could not do small talk or did you feel like you were screaming on the inside trying to be like quiet a people pleaser I didn't really come into myself until I went to college I went Mm -hmm. to an all girls school that was very strict with a uniform and I had one best friend we did everything together and I I had a few other friends but I wasn't like part of a huge group Mm -hmm. I grew up in England and so it was like also a very British school Mm -hmm. and I just felt like I had to spread my wings so I was like I'm gonna go to California like I had watched a lot of Laguna Beach Mm -hmm. and I had watched like the OC and I was like it was like a movie you know when they're like I want to go there like foreign like I, I yeah, been, like say by the bell too, which I'm a little older than you, but like I was like California is a foreign place. It's a different place. Like yeah. they do things differently there. They have a really good time. Like everybody has a convertible. Like everybody's you know kissing a lot of boys. Yeah, me a virgin at the time. Like I was like <laughs> I need to get myself to California. So I applied to like a ton of schools in America. I was like see you later, family. Go to school in California. And like the second my feet hit the ground, I was like I'm reborn. Oh, and it's like a good no. I'm so preachy. Like I turn my followers always make fun of me because I like everything has to be like a lesson. But like what I learned a lot is like confidence is so fake it till you make it. Like I wasn't confident mm-hmm. in high school. And then when I got to college, I was like, nobody here knows me. Who's Who, going to call your bluff? Who's going to call my bluff? Like, yeah, if I pretend to be confident yeah. and fun, 
like they'll think I am. And that's exactly what happened. President of my sorority, like had the best time, oh, wow. like million friends. Yeah. And like, you can be whatever you want. And I'm a big fan of, you know, reinventing yourself yeah. and going through different eras and, and, you know, doing the whole thing. So long winded answer, but no, yeah. I'm fascinated by people that grew up in all girls schools and like what that does to you. I and loved all girls. Did you love it? in it or no looking, of looking course back. at the time I was like you're ruining exactly. my life like right. I'm gonna it's die right. it's a terrifying like, environment to me There's but I hear no you boys. like looking back you're like that was dope it, yeah, it well. made me who I am today totally. my entire platform is about female friendship and like being a strong woman and mm -hmm. like making yourself happy filling up your cup first yes. that's what my book is about like it's all you can trace it back to the female friendships that I had and how important I feel that they are in life and I don't think I would appreciate it on the same level had I not gone to an all girls school and also I'm boy crazy now. Like I cannot imagine how it would have been if mm -hmm. I was in high school. I'm actually not boy crazy now, but you know what I mean? If I was in high totally. school, I was very self-conscious in high school. Yeah. I think the uniform and the fact that it was all girls was kind of like, if I have a zit, who cares? It removes the whole thing. The I mean, I had thing. the exact opposite experience. It took me way longer to arrive at the like, I want to be a girl's girl. I want yeah. tons of girlfriends. Like growing up, I just wanted boys' attention. I wanted to be popular. Yeah. I wanted guys to like me. I had a lot of girlfriends, but I wasn't like beating the drum of like female empowerment. Right. Right. My, nothing means more to me than my girlfriends. It took me much longer to arrive there. But I like that you're like, I wouldn't be who I am today without it. I think it's that way about social media. If I would have had social media in high school and college, I think it would have broken me a little bit. Of course. And same. I feel so lucky. And so I feel like it's kind of the same thing. Like looking back, it's like, that's what made you it's who you are. nice. Yeah. Okay. So you're not boy crazy. Are you dating anybody? Are you single? I'm seeing someone. It's very, very casual. It's okay. not, we're not like exclusive. We're just like, yeah. Okay. okay. How'd you guys yeah. meet? On a dating app. Okay. How do you like, do you like using dating apps? Have you found the success? Are they a means to She's an in end? a dating app era. I watched your thing last so, night. So it was a sponsored post, but I still felt like, <laughs> I felt like it was No, genuine. because it was true. Yeah. It, as much as possible, I tried to line up the no, truth. No, it felt, the, it didn't feel spawn like con. a spawn. So last year I was so like moody Judy. I was so, had a really bad attitude about dating and I didn't go on any dates. I was just like obsessed with my ex-boyfriend who mm -hmm. I broke up with. So I was like, okay, I like whatever. <laughs> How long were you together? Only nine months, but like everything with me is like so like nine ah, months feels like a long time. Yeah, like it's significant. It was the anyway, long story, but obsessed with him for the whole year. <laughs> Wouldn't go on dates with anyone. I was like, eh, the apps are so bad, and they are. Listen, the apps are really, really, really bad. But then I went on this classic, classic millennial, go on a trip to Costa Rica over New Year's. And I like eat, pray, love, like act a little slutty. And I come back a new woman and I'm like, <laughs> you know what? I have a choice. Like I can either let these dating apps fuck me and make me depressed mm -hmm. or I can learn how to use them to my advantage. This is an app. This is an algorithm made by people who want money. So I can either let that make me depressed or I can find a way to make it work for me. Yeah. And so I just started being like, for example, on Hinge. I don't know if you guys know about Rose Jail, but there's something called Rose Jail. I don't know what the real name for it is, but like they put the hot people oh, in okay. Rose Jail. Okay. And to get them, you have to buy digital like peg, roses yeah. and send them, which is <laughs> humiliating, by the way. First of all, you're going to make me buy a digital flower to send to some guy <laughs> named Chad who lives in fucking Mar Vista. Like get but real Chad Hinge. is 6'3", and so he's in Rose Jail. But Chad is 6'3", so he's in Rose Jail. And I was, I was like, oh, that's so cringe. And then I was like, I, this coming from the girl who spends eleven ninety nine on on a latte, like I think I can splurge for some roses <laughs> for okay? lifelong love. For yes, totally. So now, yeah. what I did is I bought ten packs of them. I got. <laughs> I'm I'm rich in roses. I am rich. Okay. I I send them out like they're candy. I pop those motherfuckers like they're M and M's. Okay. I, love I that. send it out it's all the time. And it's yeah, you're like yeah, I'm a bad bitch. I'm I make successful. Money. I can afford yeah. these roses. And it's like. <laughs> And I think it, we're at the point where it's like everybody knows that we're in hell together. Like we're <laughs> wading through the sludge of the trenches. So it's like if a guy thinks that me sending a rose is hinge, if he's no, so not clued into that fact that obviously he's in Rose Jail, then I would never be with him anyway. And also like I'm not, I can't deal with that beta behavior. Right. So it's like, so to me it's like, if I send you a rose, you better accept and like write me something funny quick because I yeah. bestowed you so this honor. So if somebody honor. sends me a rose, am I in rose jail? Ooh, not, that means not you're hot. necessarily. Damn no. it. But, okay. but high likelihood. But high likelihood. I'm not. No, so yeah, is this you how are. you met the guy? Okay. Or is yeah, this just yeah, a, a I sent him a rose. You tossed him a rose. Yeah. I mean, I, 
this is incredible. And I just want to go back to what you said about like spending the money, you know, if you have it, obviously, you know, we don't someone overdrafting for roses, but like it's, I, when I moved here, I was on this mission to really find a partner. This is last year. And I, and I did, and I'm with my boyfriend for about a year. I didn't mean I'm on a date app, but regardless, it was like my intention and my manifestation. And I paid the premium Raya top tier price, which is not cheap. And that's just one example, like kind of like the rose thing. Like I, you feel like you're like, am I going to pay for this shit? Am I this big of a loser? And then you're like, why would I not? Like I'm paying for all this other stuff. Uh, yeah. I'm spending my well, time for and my a, energy. You pay for a gym. Yeah. You but pay like, for a certain seat on a plane. Why would reading you, books? By the way, it's the same less. as like, if you want to take it back to how people used to meet, which is like going out, you pay for the drinks. Like yeah. when you go mm-hmm. out on, on a night out with your friends to try and meet a guy, you pay for a million shitty vodka sodas. It's the same fucking thing. Yeah. You pay for an Uber like, I just, all I'm yeah. saying is like removing the stigma yeah. of like if this is my goal and it costs a little more money like why do I have a weird threshold on this totally. you know I'm gonna spend it somehow a hundred percent and what I said to say to my followers also is we need to take it less seriously because it's so unserious like, <laughs> we are at the point where we are like pontificating about digital roses it's so unserious so just do whatever feels good and try to have fun with it because totally. I really think that we're at the elbow of a shift in mm-hmm. dating where we are just going into a new time and we're not adjusted yet and it feels uncomfortable and strange and stressful and it feels very personal, but it's not. So don't take it seriously. Well, you talk about in your book about getting people off of pedestals and like, yes. I think we're embarrassed to buy these roses and send them because you're like, well, how's this going to look? It's like, who fucking cares? who cares? What did that guy do today that's who so cares? impressive? We're all going to be cringe. And also like, I love the notion, not as it pertains to dating, but in general of like everything you want is just over the other side of cringe mountain. Mm. And it's like everybody who has achieved <laughs> something great that you could possibly want they got there because they were like yeah fuck it I'm gonna go for it like I'm gonna do the cringe thing I'm gonna post on TikTok I'm gonna record the song I'm gonna Mm. learn to DJ in my 30s like whatever it's like yeah you can sit there and think it's cringe but like you're the one sitting there and they're the people doing it I love that that's great okay well what we don't want to do is have basic ass small talk with you about the box theory no we already dove in but you're kind of known for the box theory and I really wanted to chat with you about your feelings on it now Mm -hmm. and if you still believe it whole wholeheartedly and then also we have a reverse box theory in the book which we want to dive into I always wanted to write a book I went to school for English like I had creative writing and you know I got my master's in journalism and I didn't know what I wanted to write it about and as my content started to develop I just thought why don't I put all my theories which other girls seem to like in one place and kind of write about the mistakes that I made in my 20s and It's just the book that I wish I had when I was 25 because Mm -hmm. I was like very lost and felt very upset and alone and behind Mm -hmm. and I didn't know how to be happy by myself and I wish that I had an influencer who I thought was cool to be like, oh, well, I'm single and I'm happy. It's Mm -hmm. okay. You're allowed to be. That's normal and fine and good and you should. Box Theory, I'm shocked at how much it's like retained its you know notoriety or whatever but for anyone listening who doesn't know it's my theory that when a guy meets a girl this is cis hetero relationships in a romantic setting he puts her into one of three boxes he wants to date her he wants to hook up with her or he wants nothing to do with her okay last one is easy you should be able to tell when he wants nothing to do with you where people get confused (laughs) is between hookup and dating box now the thing is you cannot switch from box to box So if you're in the hookup box, you can talk about Jesus and golden retrievers and you can not have sex with him for five months and he still won't want to date you. Vice versa, if you're in the date box and you get blackout drunk on your first date and throw up on his shoes, if he wants to date you, he's still going to want to date you. Mm. It's just different for men and women. Reverse box theory is more of like a, a mindset trick. I noticed throughout my 20s and in myself a lot as well, is that before girls would even meet guys, they would put them in one box. The, I want to date him, he's everything. Mm-hmm. He's my marriage material totally. type. Future trip like crazy. Future trip like crazy. Like you see three pictures of him on a dating app and you're like, we are going to have a June wedding. Totally. And you're like, you don't know his last name. Right. And it's bad. It's like, it's a silly, you know, I'm making it sound silly, but like it's very damaging because then girls go into first dates thinking this is a, an interview. I have to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Anything I do is going to fuck this up. Like I'm on edge and they don't for once 
stop and say, wait, has this guy asked me any questions? Wait, my drink's been empty for half an hour. He hasn't asked if I go refill it. Like he didn't remember that I told him that I'm a nurse. Like, because they're so blinded by Mm -hmm. the one What you've already decided. You, you, he has to be my husband. He has to be my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And when you make that shift internally and you go into a date thinking this is a vibe check, that's it. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful and it makes it more fun. Yeah, I, I like love I love the advice in this book because it just de-escalates all these situations. Yeah, it just it really makes you walk into a date and go, "I'm just going to see if I enjoy this. Just I'm going to see if I like this see person." How you feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But by the way, men agree uh, or don't agree with box theory okay. based on their maturity and intellect. So, so okay, have so people like deep guys have you- validated box theory on TikTok? Like, gotten the hundreds yeah. of thousands of views and said this is absolutely correct. Yeah, because my sh- feeling is like, okay, if I withhold sex, I could jump boxes, but it's like we always talk about how like women have all these stories of like he wore me down, you know, like men can jump boxes for you, but like you just but, don't. But hear this is men the thing, stuff like that. It's like for that, my my thing is like women date like venture capitalists and men date like stockbrokers. Men are like, what is it today? Like, I see her and I value her on this mm. stock today. Women are like. <laughs> Well, with, uh, in three to six months, if I put an improvement plan and I invested yeah. money here That's and I did so this, true. then I think I could like make it work. I could, I could scale this company. And it's like, why? Like, I'm not a rehabilitation center. I'm not a therapist. I'm not someone's mommy. Like, we've got to stop thinking like that because you can't date someone for their potential. Well, I don't want to. Absolutely. Yeah. But all I'm saying is we know so many stories of where women didn't like him at first and then they married totally. the dude, you know. I was just talking about this yesterday on Instagram. Someone was like, so you think that women can grow to be attracted to a guy? And I was like, absolutely. fucking All the time we see All it. All the fucking time. Yeah. Men, like, you've never heard him say, and then she was super funny and I all of a sudden wanted to fuck her. And then my penis got up. No, yeah. you don't hear yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. We talked about it with Jared because we were like, this is a story that you hear at a wedding. You're like, well, at first, you know, we were just <laughs> friends. I didn't find him attractive and here we are today and no guy yeah. has ever been like, well, at first I didn't want to fuck her at all. Right, right, and right. And how funny, so funny she was. Right. And it, people are listening and they think they jump boxes and I'm sure there's exceptions to everybody. Totally. No, there's fine. always an exception, but, and I don't mean this in a mean way, but like, when people write these really long accounts of how they jumped a box, they're like, and then I like hooked up with him casually for two years and he finally dated me. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. I'm like, we okay, you jump boxes. Like, good for you. Two like, years? Was it worth you, the two you, years? You, you proved me wrong. Ooh, yeah, you yeah. got me. Like, okay. <laughs> I don't want to manipulate my way into the date box. And by the way, right. we've all been in the date box and like, it doesn't happen like every day, obviously, but when you're in the date box, you remember how fucking stupid, you know what I mean? You have those moments where you're like, oh, this is what it's supposed to feel like. Yes. And all those other times you were like, I was fucking playing myself. I was Ugh. kidding myself when I was like, well, I, I, I guess it's not weird that he didn't text me for six days. You're like, you were in the hookup box. And I, that's why yeah. I love the theory so much. And it's so freeing because it just mm-hmm. like empowers women. Like be empowered. By the way, if you're okay with being in the hookup box, that's okay. Yeah, like, totally. Stay in the box, get yours. I like what you said about waiting two years. Cause we actually in particular, I know one person that's just like, she's married to him now. She waited him out for years of him not introducing her to his family, his friends, like not feeling like she was really a part of his life. He like went on a trip, was talking to some girl on Instagram. She found out like she just waited him out for years. Well, it ruins and now they're are. married. And, and then I'm like, well, you won't be taking the best years of my life waiting for somebody. No, no, no. Like it's everybody's choice. I can't feel like that day like, to day for a month. I, no, 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 no. Same. I'm very independent. Like I couldn't do it. But like. If it works for someone, it works for them. Like, yeah, no tea, no shade. Yeah. I think just, that it's hard to like, like you meet somebody and you're just like, I'll wear him down. Like, he'll see how great I am. And maybe I just want to have sex with him. Like, he's going to see that I'm worth dating. And it's, I like how you talk about it in the book where you're just like, you got to just go live your life. You got to date. You have and to live your life. Like, that's it. You have to be the main character of your life. The second you start to wait around for a guy or anybody, you are elevating them to a higher status yes. in your own life, which mm-hmm. is like, really sad. And I, mm-hmm. I don't say that from a judgmental place. I say it because I did it for an entire decade of my life in my twenties. Mm-hmm. And I feel sad and I wish that I could go back and I could be like, baby, he doesn't like you. Like, it's okay. There's a lot of guys who do. And if you would just go see them or better yet, go have fun with your friends and do anything else than sit around and be sad about this guy who does not like you, mm-hmm. then yeah. Absolutely. I love the theory of match the energy. Mm-hmm. If that's what somebody's giving match you, the energy. match the energy. Match their energy. 
energy back. Yeah. yeah. I think that we all think I'm going to lean in harder. I'm going to show this person how great I am because I am so great. And it's I like that Aaron. I also, you just said this and I also like to reiterate, like we've all done this. Like that's how we're able to speak on totally. it. Like, I always want to make sure, I mean, I'm 40 years old. We never want to come across like you silly girls. And we're like, no, no, no you are us. I only know <laughs> this because I've, I've done this a hundred <laughs> no, times. I look back I, you're like, oh my I God. I quite literally wrote the book on right? this because exactly. I did it so many fucking times. Like that's the point of it is right. like, I, it's not from judgment. It's just like, if I save one girl like six months of time yeah that is like that's a win for me like 100%. that's that's uh, as lame as it sounds that's really what I was mm-hmm. put on earth to do is to like save women time mm-hmm. I love it <laughs> <laughs> I do think as you get older it does get easier to walk away from these situations a even thousand. recently I've, I've known this guy for a couple of years I really I like him I care about him I could see like a really great future and he's just not gonna date me he's just not and yeah. our friend's wife said to me that guy's not gonna take you home to his parents like they're conservative. They have a certain type of light. Like he's not going to take yeah. home the girl who owns the vibrator company. Yeah. And it felt like as I've gotten older, it was easier to just acknowledge that and walk away from the situation totally. instead yeah. of like being depressed and pining over it for too long. Knowing where you stand is so powerful because then you can make an informed decision yeah. as to whether you're having fun or not, or if it's worth it for you or not. And we have to be real with ourselves. Mm-hmm. And and then you can have a funeral. We want to talk about funerals. This is maybe <laughs> arguably my favorite part of the book. I just really, yes. I like the closure you can provide yourself. Yeah, I personally believe we give ourselves closure with a situation ship. This is not for if you are Marriage, dating someone like yeah. for two years and you break up, whatever. I'm talking about situation ships. You're seeing someone casually, it's undefined. You're probably in the hookup box, whatever. And either they ghost you or they are breadcrumbing you, whatever it ends. Like you need to hold a funeral. You need to get yourself together. And like the sillier you make it, the better. So what I say is like go buy yourself a treat a latte, a cake, a bottle of wine, go home, light a candle, put on Hallelujah, the song that Marissa died to in the OC, and (laughs) literally like hold a funeral and be like, it is so sad that Jonathan died or whatever his name is. (laughs) Like, it's so sad that, you know, Chad from Hinge passed away. That's like really, really sad. And take a day to fully mourn And then you don't think about him again because we waste so much time thinking about guys we never dated Mm -hmm. so much time. And it's like kind of addictive. Again, speaking from experience, not judgment. It's kind of addictive because you're like, you're at work, you're like on your phone, you're like refreshing his dumb Instagram that has nine posts. You know, he's not going to post and you're like, but what if, what if, what if, no, what ifs he's dead. Yeah. You had the funeral. And I think, Mm -hmm. you know, not that like death is funny, he, 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 but like you can talk about him as if he's dead with your friends, which is funny. Totally. RIP, like rest his soul though. You know, Uh like I think that's a way, yes, we don't wish death on anybody, but to even like have him post-mortem with your friends too. It's just good to like draw a line in the sand and kind of like pull your shit together, you know, sometimes and just be like, enough is enough. Like this is where we're going to stop because you can go on and on and on. And then all of a sudden you've spent like three months kind of seeing someone and then another yeah. three months like thinking about him. And I always think to myself, like in any situation in a year from now, how do I want to have dealt with this mm-hmm. and then act totally. that way? And it's like, you're not going to remember this guy. Like, trust me, totally. if it's just, if it's just like a random thing you're just doing to like keep yourself entertained, like it doesn't matter that it ended, just like move on. The sooner you move on, the more good shit will come into your life. I love the theory of like how in a year do I want to look back and see mm-hmm. myself? It's Cause how many of us years later down the road, look back and go, I cried so much over that person. I was so no, miserable. I journaled so much. I tortured yeah. everybody in my life. And mm-hmm. how lovely would it be once to look back and be like, I actually did what I would have hoped I did. Yeah. Totally. You're and proud it, of yourself. And again, like one of the nice parts about getting older is you can kind of like gut check is like, does this matter? Or does this not matter? And like when I think about the guys that I cried over in my 20s and I like literally don't remember their names. Like I literally have to look on my list right. of people I had sex with and I'm like, that was his that name. That is so funny. Like, yeah, I mean, I've dated for, you know, 20 plus years now at this point. And it's like, you really literally forget. Like, okay, I'll be in my contacts and I'm like, no, who is Arthur? No, you know, literally. Like, just build a whole journal up about and Arthur. No. And I was upset about Arthur. When no. I really ran the tape, I was like, oh my God, I was 27. Oh yeah. And just it's crazy. tall, skinny guy with a big dick. Like it all started to come flooding back. And I was like, I had forgotten that a person existed that I even dated an really? Arthur. It's wild. And when I was watching Sex in the City, when I was growing up, I thought that was the most like outrageous, unrealistic <laughs> episode when she's like, I fucked you before. I was like, that would never happen. And like, I literally, where was I recently? I was like talking to this guy and I was like, 
I've hooked up with this guy before. Ah. And I was like, oh my God. Like I didn't have sex with him, but I was like, I've literally made out with this person. And I was like, where have I met you? And he was like, our friend had a situation where she matched with this guy on Hinge or whatever day nap. And the, <laughs> she, he felt familiar to her, but she was like, no, I probably just seen him on Hinge before, you know? Yeah. And they exchanged numbers. <laughs> The last text he had sent her was a Zoom link during COVID mm. for a 2020 COVID date that they did and never spoke again. She hated him on the Zoom <laughs> no. date. And the last text was the Zoom. I was oh like, my oh God. my God. And That's she was brutal. like, I've already broken up with you. That is so funny. Did you That's break so up with brutal. somebody again? Oh, the Zoom dates. Did well, you do those during COVID? Yeah. I did a lot of FaceTime dates. Yeah. I did one with a guy. He's on TV. He's not that famous, but like he's on TV. We were like having a FaceTime for probably like an hour. And then he was like, do you want to see something? And I was like, yeah. And he flipped the camera and he was stroking his dick. And I was like. He was stroking off. Just I it. was like. Ah! And we like were talking about anything sexual. We were That's like. We're crazy. This I, is the first time you guys talked? Yeah. You want to see something? Yeah. Uh, what did you do? I was like. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, Damn cool like good for you like i'm gonna go now Will you and you just got off the phone <laughs> i got off the phone how right long away. did you watch him jerk off reina i would have had to linger for like a 20 seconds i'm hitting record just in so case the worst part is i actually met up with him after that <laughs> <laughs> i'm trash but it was like really hard times it was like a, she, i did disgusting things during COVID. no i was like it was really bad but all bets are off before i had i became an influencer i had this job i was out of work i was like literally going crazy uh-huh. so i was like whatever i'll yeah i'll go get coffee with you 25 minutes late Ugh. he was 25 minutes late yeah okay and then he was like the biggest dick ever and i was like i we were just so desperate during covid no it's wild did like a zoom recording with ashley and a guest and then i blew him like two seconds later (laughs) like as soon as the (laughs) The first person that was in your home the first person during covid it was like in may of the quarantine and i was like i'm gonna suck off this stranger i know i remember doing a zoom date with the guy that i was dating right before covid and like i like like did a contour. I'm like, what am I doing? My parents, yeah. I was living with my parents for those three months and they were like, why are you doing your makeup? I was like, what? Just leave me alone. I know. I like shaved my bush for what? Crazy. Are you like I, what I thought you were going to show I them on Zoom. Yeah. I used to put on perfume for Zoom dates because it's just like, what I don't have to live in feel good. I yeah. used to fuck my neighbor during COVID who yeah. couldn't even string together enough words in a sentence to make me like interested in anything he ever said. Yeah. He was the worst. It happens. So you said something that was interesting. You broke up with somebody and then you were like kind of obsessed, obsessed with them. With like, yeah, I'm like so obsessed with him. I think I always will be. Was it you just knew it wasn't? We knew we were, we were, it wasn't like a long term thing, but it was like sometimes you just have a chemistry with someone that's like, okay, so that's what you miss, like the chemistry. The sex was amazing. Yeah. Okay. But like the banter, like this, (laughs) the whole package of like the chemistry together. It was just, we're not right for each other. I think, you know, I have the utmost love and respect for him. And like I'm a Virgo and I'm very like regimented and like prideful, Mm -hmm. but. I feel like it's almost easier for me to be like, I'm always going to like be obsessed with him or have a crush on him because he's just like that guy. But mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that it worked out, you know? That is, it's just such a funny concept. It's such a when funny concept. Yeah. Having those feelings about an ex and you're like, but I broke up with him. <laughs> you yeah. Know? And it's like, yeah. Well, that's yeah. not usually. And then I was like such a miserable bitch for a year to all my friends. I was like, you guys need to put this. And they were like, I can't like I was Carrie when I mean, that when her friends are like stop talking yeah. about him and then I was like did you meet him on social no I met him in real life no mute him did you meet oh, him um, I thought you said me too yeah I uh, <laughs> yeah but like you always got that cheeky finsta you I know? have stopped going on my finsta it's been honestly months when I got a new phone I just like lost access to it mm-hmm. and then I created a new one and I like put a couple people on there and I was like I don't care about any of you no so I did an entire podcast episode called delete your finsta about like how it's so damaging for us okay. like yeah I am the worst like I'm back with a vengeance I'm so hypocritical it's like really I'm on addictive. It. it's really addictive and it's like I have it for two reasons like to stalk boys and then all also to like follow people who make me feel terrible about myself like models and whatever so it's like double whammy bad our friend has one that's so funny she just follows every like reality show person and all their extraneous it's like her i like that weekly life and style because she doesn't want to have them on her main her yeah, main. yeah yeah no no so no she'll go into her finsta just to catch up on like the most random d-list well, yeah. reality show stars so i like that because i actually have two i have my like stocking one and then i have <laughs> my fashion one where i just follow like everything and it's like beautiful and i more think about it like a pinterest right because oh, i don't like want to have it on my main so I, it's like uh-huh. that Theme. for you page is more of like my reels mm-hmm. true self but like my main is obviously like my friends and whatever i try yeah. to keep my main just to like my friends and people that i actually have met in real life mm-hmm. but 
that's still my for you page is like really weird on Instagram. It's like I've been talking about getting a boob job a lot to my friends, so it's like Ooh. all boobs on my feed right, right now. now. We know okay. the best. I have a good guy so, for you. Okay, there we go. He did my, so, we literally, he is the best. Okay, amazing. Yeah, yeah Dr. Barrett, and he's great on social. He did my jaw lipo. Fabulous. That's why my face is a little paralyzed right now. Well, that's not great. Fault. When did you do it? Uh, four weeks ago. Oh, wow. But that's normal. You yeah. get yeah. a little paralysis in your face. I've talked about it every week. Yeah. But yeah, he's the best. He's the best. Okay, okay so will you, do you get a lot of DM slides? Like, will you entertain the DMs? From guys? Yeah. No, I don't think that do straight male men following? think it's a safe space. Uh, <laughs> they lurk, <laughs> but it's like not safe for them there. Okay. But I, I occasionally will, but not like any okay. real ones. It's never, yeah. nothing's ever come yeah. of it. You no. have more of like a female following? It's like 97%. I'm 97. Yeah. 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 So All funny. women. Girls, yeah. gays, and theys. Thank God. God, honestly, honestly, I like it. Our, I like our it. pages are so positive are so and so nice. Positive. Us. Everything I, I post, everybody's just like, yes, girl, fire emoji, go off. There's never, yeah. if one man dares to comment something, everybody will attack them. Oh, it's, no. it's crazy. Like, we get hate here and there, but it's not on, like, our Instagram. Like, people are really no, nice. This isn't a challenge if anyone's listening. But, like, you know, these poor girls who, like, at one point ever worked at Barstool or whatever, yeah, it, like, yeah. just got all those I guys know in their orbit it's not their fault but it's right. just like we never we've cultivated this female audience for six years it's really so special yeah that's yeah. what we want so nice can we talk about sex a little bit let's do it okay my so favorite topic i like the chapter in the book about prioritizing your own pleasure and sex and yeah. i think so many of us myself included like in the middle of a sexual experience are just like how do i look is this person enjoying what i'm doing to them is my technique good like are, yeah. did they like this and like it's so hard to be like wait do I like this? Am I enjoying this? So can we talk about the chapter in the book? Yeah. I think, again, it's so from experience. It's like I didn't really start having good sex until I was like 30. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, again, really hope that anyone who listens to me or reads my book or whatever can like try to implement this earlier. I think that there's so much shame surrounding female pleasure. I think there's a huge orgasm gap. I think that we are just not taught to advocate for our own pleasure at all. And the crazy thing is once you start doing that, you actually become hotter. That's like the mm -hmm. kicker of all of this is like once you actually start to learn how to talk about sex and like ask the questions and communicate, it gets better and you become like so much infinitely hotter to whoever you're having yeah. sex with. What was sex life in your 20s versus your 30s? It was just so performative. Like it was completely based on what I thought I needed to look and sound and feel like. And that's like a horrible experience because you're so in your head and you're not in your body. Orgasms are so mental for women too. And if you're thinking about like, oh my God, wait, how should I sound? Like, wait, what should I do? I, I read that thing. Like I have to do this and that and this and that. And like, you don't have a shot in hell to orgasm. It's no wonder why. I think the stat is like 68% of men orgasm the first time with a new female partner mm -hmm. and like Nine percent of women nine do. Seems I, high. I, I yeah, think that sixty sixty eight seems really low. I know. Nine I seems it, high. I agree. We did a great episode with Vanessa Marin, and she's a sex psychotherapist. She's fantastic. Mm -hmm. We talked about. Yeah, you should have her on. If yeah, you have guests. Yeah, if you want to talk about mm -hmm. orgasms, I mean, we talked about how women just don't prioritize this at all, and we prioritize males' pleasure. And I think it is getting better the more conversations you have about this stuff. But there's a huge oh, gap. Yeah. It is, but like even anecdotally, when I speak to my followers, who I think are a group of pretty like engaged like thoughtful, intellectual, like women who want it all, a lot of them are still like, mm -hmm. I can't, I, I don't know how to orgasm. Yeah. I'm scared to ask. It's been two years. He's never gone down on me. And I'm like, this Ugh. is like a crisis in my yeah. opinion. I'm not trying to be some like, oh, like I love sex. Like let's talk about it all the time. It's all rooted in like shame mm -hmm. and it's all rooted in women not viewing their needs on the same level as men mm -hmm. and then so like if that's your relationship with a guy in the bedroom where it's like it's always he comes first it's always like oh no like it's taking me too long don't worry about it how do you think that's going to translate in your life like mm -hmm. that will be for your career too like yep. it's going to be like oh well your career mm -hmm. matters less or like oh well you're you want to go there on vacation I want to go here you matter less like it's all connected and I want to empower women to feel like they can ask for what they want in the bedroom and that's just normal yeah and everyone's goal should be that you both get off totally like, so if you're with somebody that doesn't even cross their mind I mean that's kind of crazy to me like when you're in like a strong healthy relationship with a partner that cares about your pleasure like if he does come first he's like well what can I do oh yeah if they just get up and that's it it's, it's a like, huge red flag no to me. it's so or such a or red the flag. did you come 
Did I sound like I came? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. like, grow up. No, <laughs> it's cr- what it's wild. I, what do you say to somebody that says my man hasn't gone down on me in two years? I it mean, it breaks my heart. I, I know. <laughs> it's difficult because I think when you're that deep in, it's incredibly daunting Absolutely. subject to broach. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And so that's really tough if you've done something for that long and it's just, you've never brought it up. You sent him this podcast. You sent him this podcast yeah. or you say like, I really want to try this or like I was watching this. It really turned me on. I want you to do this. Like Mm -hmm. I'm not whatever you have, but it's like, I'm not diminishing how daunting that task is, which is why I really encourage girls to like in the beginning stages, make it known. Like, no, I didn't come like, no, that didn't work for me. If you don't do it from the onset, it's very, very difficult to change. It's true. And we do believe you can change it and you can wrap things in positivity and say, you know, I love what we're doing. Here's what would enhance it for us even more. Mm, Right. This thing would be really fun for us together. But yeah, if you start from the beginning, it is definitely, you have less backpedaling to do. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, and again, I think you'd love talking to Vanessa Marin, but we talked, uh, our whole episode was about faking orgasms and like, what do you do when you're in a marriage and you've been doing it for 10 years or whatever? It's like crazy to have to tell them. Um, remember I was listening to that couple fight at the hotel in San Diego and I was like supposed to meet Rain in the lobby and I was like I'm gonna be late this couple just started fighting and it, I was like gonna listen until I felt like if it got dangerous I would call down because yeah. I've actually done that before it's yeah. scary and I, they're screaming back and forth and then she was like when's last time you ate my pussy and I was like uh, Rain I'm gonna be late I have to see this through. I was like I support this wholeheartedly <laughs> oh and it was so God. funny and he's trying to recall and it was just like the funniest fight to listen to and then they were silent and I only can assume that he was eating your pussy and that's what I hope full. happened <laughs> I yeah. I have like a kind of an out there th- like I feel like most of my theories are kind of like really backed up by real thought this is the new box theory and it's the like no this is, this is the actual box <laughs> the theory in the box theory <laughs> no but like I don't really talk about this one because it's it's for me personally it's okay. not for like are you debuting a theory here no okay. I just like think that guys are split into two types like those who love eating pussy and those who don't and it's like I know who I'll end up with. And it's like, you can tell. Like, it's hard to get the ones that don't like to do it to do it. It just but is. I'm so on my like shit now that I, I, I would just be so turned off by that. Like, I, I don't think I would ever be even be in a relationship with a guy who wasn't like obsessed with doing it. It seems a little stunted yeah. and just like. It's because un- because un- again, it goes back to like, do you love women? Like, do you like, if you're not turned on by the female orgasm, yeah. like then that to me is like a red flag. But like there are women that like don't like sucking dick. But, like, I know, but so that's what I was about to say, but it's different because of the orgasm inequality. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because when he's having sex, penetrative sex, he's coming 100% of the time. Yeah. And I also just think it's like one of those cases where there's a double standard and like, I don't give a fuck. Like sometimes like there's yeah. been enough inequality sure. and women have been through enough shit where yeah. sometimes I just say to my followers, like, I'm just... I'm sorry, I can't explain this one away. Sometimes it's not equal. And in the case of oral sex, I don't think it is. Well, it's also not, not the same mechanism. Be, like, yeah, I, yeah, it's not it's, the same you're mechanism. You're choking on something. Your eyes you're are literally, yeah. Like, I love sucking dick more they than anybody. They don't call it a job for nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. But you're like, your eyes are choking. <laughs> you're, you're, you're gagging. Mm-hmm. It's a lot yeah. of work. Well, th- listen, we could line up a hundred dudes and the guys that are like, I don't need pussy. Like, I just know who you are. I, you're not my kind yeah, of guy. I, I know it to be true. Yeah. I know it wholeheartedly in my soul. Yeah. I've never dated a guy that didn't want to go down on me. But it's very funny because then there is that line of they're too eager. And Nikki Glazer does a bit about this. She, it's in her stand-up special. She posted a clip recently of the guys that talk about it too much. And they're like, I'll, I'll eat it. I'll eat your pussy. And she's like, no, not you. <laughs> no, no, you no. Know? Yeah, yeah. That's that's so right. That's so but right. We, but I agree with you wholeheartedly. Because like, there's like a healthy enthusiasm. But there's the guys who are like, let's call them evolved chads where they are like in the mix enough where they know that we're talking about this and so they are like I actually know one yeah and he's like my friend but he's always like I do it first thing and yeah, I'm like okay too, but do you too earnest to like yeah. yeah but I love that theory and I stand by it okay this is gonna be like a fighting last words but I don't think I would ever like be with a guy who I had to ask to do it yep. like, I don't think I, that's a crazy I thing I, crazy. I don't think we want to like that. beg people to like worship our body parts no. like we should want to be intimate with each other and please each other again because like if you've been with people who do that then you know it's possible so you're like yeah. well if this isn't it then it's just a compatibility thing and that's okay right yeah, yeah. exactly yeah it's like, like it's just a compatibility thing so some people are yeah. less sexual i think that you know i often forget having grown up on the east coast in a very liberal jewish family that, like people grow up in extreme religious situations for like, sure conservative. they don't want to talk about this stuff for sure maybe that's just not your match a hundred percent. Yeah. This is the new box theory. Like, I feel like it's like box Tinks theory. is updated. Box yeah. theory is actually about It's like, pussy. if he doesn't eat your pussy, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's got 
gonna be in the episode. <laughs> box theory. Can we get some press? I on wonder this? if Simon Tink's and Schuster will <laughs> will buy that book. Tinks updated her box theory on Girls Gone Podcast. Box box theory. Pitch it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't be box or theory. Or eating get box it? theory. It's just eating box eating theory. Eating box theory. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> I love that. I really want to like hype this book because I love the perception Thank shifting you. and you. The chapters are short and there's good takeaways and you really just talk about how to like change your outlook. And it is so much more about just like, do I enjoy this? Am I having fun? Am I finding my self-worth? Do I have friends in a life that I like? And that's the kind of stuff we talk about all the time. It's not like a means to finding a partner. It's like a means to enjoying yourself along the way. And I think you just have like a lot of really fun takeaways. You know, if you start with like, I can change him to shift it to like, why would I want to? Things like that. I just, there's a lot of really good takeaways in this book. Even at the beginning when you were talking about reinventing yourself in college. I just think that's so important. And we get asked the question all the time, how can I be confident or how can Mm -hmm. I have main character energy or how can I reinvent myself? And I just love that you did it and you can always do it. And you can always start. It's really great if you go to college and you're far away. It's great if you move away. These are great opportunities, but you don't necessarily have to, but you can just do a little thing, like a little Mm -hmm. tripwire into it. Like I, I believe in that stuff. Like I know it sounds so stupid and silly, but like if you go get a new haircut or like if you like go get a cool outfit or if you even if you move apartments like take those opportunities to refresh and be like what do I want for this Mm -hmm. next era of my life you start a new job I don't know you get a new fucking amazing peacoat you can use that to get into your next era it's very available and I really really believe in faking it till you make it I love that. Accept your orgasms, everybody. Accept your orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tinks, tell everyone where they can find you, get the book, whatever you want to plug your, your podcast. Shows. I'm yeah. at Tinks, T-I-N-X, on all platforms. My podcast, It's Me Tinks, is available everywhere you get your podcasts. And my book, The Shift, is available wherever you get your books. Okay. And you guys know where to find us. Girlsgottoeat.com for tour tickets, new merch, all the things. Girls Gotta Eat podcast on Instagram and TikTok. I'm Ash Hez, Reynas, Reynas. Greenberg, and vibesonly.com for all the sex toys and all the things. And subscribe on YouTube, share this episode with a friend, get Tinks's book, and we'll see you next week. Have a good week, guys. Bye.